Hello. Hello, Edward. How may I help you? Okay. Well, this is Roy from the city of Paradise Valley. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm pretty good. Hey, uh, we just uh, we caught you on one of our new cactus cameras uh, littering out the window of your car. Huh, that's and, not true. Oh, no, it is true, because we have your, your car, we have your license plate number. We have it on camera. We saw it happen from one of our new cacti. Well, number one, I haven't driven my car through the town of Paradise Valley today at all. Well, I didn't say today, did I? Who is this? This is Roy from the city of Paradise Valley. Roy, would you identify yourself more? No. Why should I do that? Because I'm just asking a straightforward question, sitting here and relaxing. Oh, well, you don't sound very relaxed. I mean, as soon as I called, you're like, identify yourself. What do you want? You, like, bit my head off just for asking for you. Well. I'm I'm just letting you know. We've got our eye on you now. We're going to be watching that strike one. If you get three strikes, you're in trouble. You're going to get a ticket. A ticket for what? For for littering. Uh, We could give you a ticket right now, but we're being nice. We're not going to give you a ticket. Well, I got news for you. I haven't driven in the town of Paradise Valley in 10 days. Maybe it happened 11 days ago. I don't even go that way. It was 11 days ago, maybe. You ever think of that? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I think you're full of shit. You know you littered, and you're trying to make up excuses. You're trying to lie to me, but the cameras don't lie. We're watching well, I, every I think... move you make from our new cacti. Yeah. Well. So who is this? I already told you, it's Roy. Okay. Alright, just so you know. Do you know, who, do you know who lives next to me? Who? Andy. Oh shit, who's that? He just retired as the deputy chief of police for the city of Phoenix. Oh. I'm going to give him this phone number and ask that uh, he give this to one of his I bet friends. You're the, I bet you're the most annoying neighbor ever, like every little thing that happens to you. I'm going to get the deputy. He lives next door to me. We're good friends. You, you think you can just litter because the deputy is your next door neighbor. Is that it? Think you're above the law now? I think you have ADD. Why do you say that? Uh, because you have nothing else to do in your life other than turn around and call up and harass people for no reason. I'm not whatsoever. harassing you. I'm giving you. I'm just giving you a verbal warning. This is strike number one. This is my job. This is what I do for a living. Okay. This is what you do for a living. That's right. I'm in charge okay, of the cacti this is the program. The phone number of you at work. Yeah. And you work for the town of Paradise Valley. Yup. And your name is Roy. Yup. This isn't supposed to be such a big deal. This is just a friendly verbal warning i'm just letting you know we saw you litter and if you want to deny it that's fine but if you do it another time we're going to give you a ticket okay all right i know andy by the way you can tell andy to suck a dick i don't care about andy you think i'm afraid of andy whoa 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 you you let andy know i said that too whoa what are you having a heart attack what's going on what was that noise you're making? Yeah, that hurt. Was that your O face? That hurt? I, I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about Andy. Oh. Uh, Can you just admit that littering's wrong and you won't do it again? First of all, littering is wrong and I don't do it. Well, why'd you do so it what then? What am I going to turn around and throw out of my car? My dog? No, you threw like a big gulp cup or something. No, I don't go to the go cup places. And I don't go out for coffee. And I don't throw the go cups out the window because i don't have any you don't have any windows i'm a diabetic and i drink water all right you threw your water cup out the window i don't have a cup you just you cup it in your hands and drink it that way no i have a bottled water is what i do well you can't throw the bottles out the window i don't throw the bottles out the window you can't throw anything out the window it's literally we've got our cacti on you that's our new slogan is your new slogan. Yeah, you've heard about our cacti, right? No, I haven't heard about your oh, cacti. Okay. You're, you're too busy littering to keep up on current events. What? All right, I gotta go. I have other people to call and yell at. You do? Yep. Well, I'm gonna put an end to your calling. No, you're not. This is my job. Yeah, this is what they pay me to do. Well, you're not gonna get a paycheck anymore either. Oh, yeah, you're going to have your... You're not going to be allowed to call up people and do what you just did. And I had the whole thing on record. Oh, really? What what did you record? So your entire conversation has been recorded. And... 
What kind of device did you use to record the call? My answering machine. Oh, okay. I didn't hear it. Oh, I'm sorry that you didn't hear it, you know? Okay. You know, that's the way that it goes. You know, the... You know, it's illegal to record someone without their permission. This is a two-party state. You're violating well, state and federal laws, motherfucker. But you don't care about laws, because you just go around littering out your car window all the time. Think you can do things like that, because you've got a neighbor that's a ex-sheriff or whatever you said. You have ADHD. Yep, that's me. I don't need me. to turn around and, and do anything except make sure that uh, you get your meds. All right. Well, I got to pay for my meds by doing my job here. So for like the twelfth time now, I'm gonna let you go. Got uh, other people to call now. So bye. Enjoy your recording. Make sure you show it to your sheriff neighbor. Oh, by the way, there's a judge that lives two houses away as well. Oh shit. Now you got me really scared. Whatever will I do? I don't have the foggiest idea. All right, littering's bad. Bye. Cactus, 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 this cocksucker. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Snowplow Show. This is RBCP, and today is February 24th, 2017. This is the show where I try to make totally normal telephone calls to people, and for some reason it pisses them off, and I don't know why, but you guys seem to like it, so I just keep doing it, I guess. Today's show is sponsored by Jack Off Daniels, and he's the one you can blame if you can hear that really high-pitched whining sound right now. No, not my voice, but there's like this thing happening in my headphones. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's really pissing me off, and it's Jack Off Daniels' fault, along with everything else that goes wrong in today's show. I've got some breaking news today. Here, let me play the breaking news music. All right, that's enough of that. A contractor mistakenly gutted a home on Forest Park Boulevard. Apparently, they looked at the number on the street and not the house. The homeowners thought that burglars had destroyed the house and taken all their fixtures, so they called the police department to report the crime. The burglars, they took appliances and toilets and furniture and cabinets, shutters, doors, molding, and even the doorbell. But it wasn't actually a burglar, it was some contractor that came into the house and just took everything. Because I guess he was supposed to do some other house there on that street, and he got the wrong house. I guess the wrong number was somewhere... I can't believe stuff like this happens. This is just crazy that that this stuff happens. You know, you always hear about this. Like a bank forecloses on a home and they send someone out to take everything from the home and they get the wrong place and the people just never get their shit back. When the contractor and his crew arrived at the street, they saw what appeared to be an address on the curb, which was 2700 Forest Park Boulevard, directly in front of a house. The crew didn't notice that the numbers on the house said 2736 and not 2700. It was a huge misunderstanding, the contractor said. Or wait, no, that was the police officer saying that. But apparently the contractor, he feels really bad and he's gonna fix everything with the guy and not keep all of his stuff that he stole out of the guy's house. So that's kind of cool. Usually it's some big corporation that does this and they refuse to help with anything. But luckily, this one, he was a local guy and he's willing to make things right, he says. And he's admitting that the mistake was his, unlike, you know, when a bank does it, when they accidentally foreclose on the wrong home. They've always got someone to blame, but this guy's taking responsibility for the whole thing. And of course I'm talking about this because we've done the same prank. We've accidentally, you know, torn the roof off of people's houses. And I think we accidentally asphalted the wrong lawn once. And then, of course, there's all those times that True Green accidentally sprayed the wrong chemicals on the wrong yard. I did try to call these people, but I didn't have any luck. Here, let me try one more time and just see if they pick up. They've been refusing to pick up. Hello, we are not available now. Yep, they will not pick up. I bet you the contractor stole their phone and their answering machine and everything. That story was sent in by several people, though, and the person that sent it to me first was Reverend William. Thanks, Reverend William. He he, uh, even wrote a headline for me. He says... Royco strikes again, guts the wrong house. I'll put a link to that article in the show notes if anyone's interested in reading about it. In other important breaking news, here, let me play the sound effect. I actually caught video of the elusive phone book delivery man. I caught him on a security camera leaving a paper phone book at my front door. I know there's always been a lot of speculation and arguments and stuff about whether the phone book delivery person really exists in 2017, and apparently he still does, and I have video proof of it, and I'm putting a link in the show notes if you'd like to see it. It's on my Instagram account. 
And the last bit of news is regarding phonelosers.org. I've finally fixed the radio station, the 24-7 stream that plays old shows all the time. Somebody in the comments uh, yelled at me and told me how to fix it. His name is Anonymous One. I don't know how that's pronounced, but I think I did it right. But he sent me a link to a thing that will create the HTML5 for me, since I'm apparently too stupid to do it, and it worked. I fixed it. There's now an HTML5 player on the main page on phonelosers.org over in the right sidebar. If you'd like to hear prank calls any time of day, any day of the week, you can now do that. Just click on the play button, and there's an HTML5 player there. I assume it will also work on tablets and phones and stuff, which is why I didn't want the Flash player there anymore, because... That usually doesn't work too well on phones, but it's working again so far. I know it probably won't last too long. It always seems to break for some reason, but if you want to hear that, you can hear that now. I also put links to listen directly if you know how to do that. Right underneath the HTML5 player, there are some links, so you can listen to the show on your Windows Media Player or on your Real Player, because everyone uses that stuff. And I guess this means I need to start doing live shows on the Shoutcast like I used to. You don't have Pepsi? You know it don't come easy. No Coke, huh? It don't come easy. Could I get more ice, please? When getting a little thing like a soft drink starts getting hard... You call this a large? Come to 7-Eleven, where you'll always get your favorite soft drink fixed by someone who knows just how you like it. You. Now that's what I call a large. Today's 7-Eleven, where the good things come easy. Here's a prank request by someone who doesn't want me to mention his name. And I don't know if he means his real name that's on the email address or if he means his fake name, which he signed the email with. But I'm just going to be safe and not say either of them, just in case, because he doesn't... Well, anyway, he says, hey, RBCP, this woman was smart enough to post her phone number on the public Facebook page for a store chain. She seems to think she was racially profiled, even though she has a nice purse. What? That's a weird thing to say. And he says, please don't mention my name if you do this prank. I don't want to get shit canned. So I guess maybe he works at this place. Maybe he got to see this happen firsthand. But the Facebook thing he sent me, it's a screen capture of this lady posting to a, uh, a store called Cost Plus World Market. And it starts off with the hashtag of bad business. And it says, at World Market, was looking at my new rugs, has kitchen towels in my arms, was eyed suspiciously by a white worker which is kind of a racist thing to say, who failed to ask me if I needed help with products, who then must have alerted the black guard. The guard followed me and my 10-year-old around the store all the way to the register. As I opened my Henry Bindel bag, I guess that's a fancy bag that she's bragging about, I spent $567 with my American Express gold card. She showed them for racially profiling her, giving them over $500. Wow, I guess with my black bag, my black face, and my mixed-race son, I needed to be racially profiled. Given that over the past six months I've spent over $3,000, I will shop at another corporation that at least if they're going to racially profile me, they don't make it so obvious. So she would like people to racially profile her behind her back instead of being obvious about it. And uh, one of her friends tells her to call corporate, and she says, I can't find the number, I'm too annoyed anyway. And then the market responds to her and says, Hey, we're sorry to hear about your disappointing experience. Please email us so we can escalate this and follow up with you. And she responded to that with, Have someone call me at, and has her phone number. And she says, I've already contacted your chief operating officer. So I guess let's call this lady and ask her why she continued to spend over $500 when she felt she was so wronged. Hello. Hi, is uh, Ginger there? This is Ginger. Oh, hey, this is Jerry. I'm from the uh, the Cost Plus World Market. and uh, Oh, hi, just... how are you? <laughs> right, right. Hi, how are you? Not too bad. Hey, uh, we just, um, we, we had a complaint from our security guard. He said you kept eyeing him and stuff while you were in the store. And could you just not do that when you're in here from right. now on? Because, you know, it makes him feel uncomfortable. Um, are you talking to me? Yes. Yeah, you're you, you he said. Do what? He, well, the, the security, you know, he was just doing the standard following you around. And he said you kept eyeing him. I'm sorry, you, can you hang on? Can you, you kept can looking you at him. Can you hang on one second? Okay. Wait, hold on one second. Okay. I figure out where the record button is. Hi. Okay. I, I had to take that call. Oh, of um, yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. Say that one more time again. Oh, which part? I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm, first of all, I'm trying to figure out. Are you? Are you the? You're the regional manager for World Markets. Correct. Yeah. And yeah, the security. One of our security team members 
Joel, he said you were just eyeing him, giving him the snake eyes and stuff. And he's just trying to do his job. He said you kept giving him an attitude. And I'm sorry, who are you even talking to? Are you talking to me? Are you making the right phone call? Oh, of course. Uh, or, uh, you're the one with the weird name, Ginger. I have a I have a weird name. Well, weird, you know, compared to mine. My name's Steve. Um. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. I think this is a this is I don't know what I'm not sure exactly what you're calling me about exactly. Oh, okay. Well, I've explained um, it twice I now. I was just saying maybe when you come to the store, don't have an attitude. Like like when you come in from now on, please check your attitude at the door. Okay, who are you? The manager of the store? Or are you the district manager? I'm just the manager of the store. The district manager, he's too busy for people like you. But um, they, they just wanted me to give you a call and let you know if you could just please try, try not. But are you tr- calling? Tr- are you calling the right person? Because I was, I are you, are, I was in there with my son and I spent five hundred sixty-seven dollars on rugs and things. Yeah, well, spending that much money does not give you the right to, uh, you know, be a bitch to everyone. So it, it's, oh my gosh, I'm, I can't, be- I cannot believe this phone call. Are you kidding me? You're, I, 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 I'm sorry, this not, is no. so, this is so out of line. I, I think. We should just end this call. I don't even understand this. Okay. I, well, I just, I don't think this is appropriate. This is completely inappropriate. Well, no, what's inappropriate is when it you come in our, in our store and, and, and treat our employees like shit. So if you could just not, and she hung up. So maybe she wasn't recording the call like I suspected that she was, because if she was recording it, she probably would have wanted to keep me on for as long as possible. Your call has been forwarded Aww, to an automatic voice message. Not picking up. Here, let's change my number to another number in that area with a different area code. Completely different phone number. We're going to trick her. We're going to trick her a good one. Make her pick up the phone. Your call has been forwarded <sighs> to an automatic okay, voice message fine. system. Okay, fine. I guess we're done with this one. She did wait more rings that time. Like, she was looking at her phone, trying to decide whether or not she should pick up. And I was going to let her know it's just a prank, but nope, she won't pick up. I can't do it, I guess. Here, I'm going to try her just one more time. I'm going to change my number once again. I'm going to make it a toll-free number this time. So, one last time. It's been like ten minutes since all of this happened, so she's had some time to think things over. Hello, this is Ginger. Hey, Ginger. I just wanted to apologize for earlier. I made a mistake. I thought I thought you were someone else. Oops. Sorry about that. I, I, I just mixed up some numbers. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Who who is this? Uh, My name is Dave. I I work with, uh, you know, Cost Plus World Market. And yeah, I was thinking of some other, some other um, lady. You know, we've got a list here of, you know, just annoying people and you were on the list and you you I'm not sure how you got my phone number. Yeah, it was just, it was on this list. It looks like maybe you, uh, you mentioned it to the media department on Facebook gave him your number right, how did you get my how did you get my how did you get my phone well number? they gave it to me because it's just a oh, list okay. here and here at the corporate office and just going through oh, this see. list and everything and i, I saw your complaint okay. I'm, I'm a little confused about why you went ahead and, are you, and I'm spent sorry, are you on the are you at the corporate office yeah i'm with the corporate office um i just uh i, I didn't understand where's why you went office? ahead and spent all that money after they after you were where's so the, wronged in the, the store where's the where's the corporate office that's in oakland Oh, you're calling from Oakland, California? Correct, yes. Oh, I have clients out there. Okay, what's oh. your last name? Well, that's really interesting. What's Th- your, th- what's thanks your... for telling me that. I just, I like Oakland. What, yeah. I, I'm sorry, what is your, your name is Dave. What's your, what's the initial of your last name? G. Oh, okay. Just, I just, um, well, I'm actually waiting for a taxi right now. Um, okay. So I wouldn't. Hey, do, uh, do you have, do you have your, really blah, 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 blah. do you have your Henry Bedell bag with you? So you look really cool and and fancy. I'm just gonna hang up now. I'm not sure why you're calling me. Well, I just you know, no, I noticed in this Facebook on. post that you were bragging a bunch about how much money you spend and what kind of things you have, and your American Express gold card. And she hung up. Damn it, person who submitted this to me. Why didn't she yell at me? I mean, a lady that makes a post like this on Facebook and she's just completely calm over the phone. What the hell was that? But whatever, it's done. I'm done with this one. Oh, and I knew the corporate office was in Oakland because the guy that submitted this mentioned that to me for some reason. Maybe he knew she was going to ask for some reason. I think that was a test, though. I think she was just trying to, uh, you know, see if I was really with the corporate office, see if I know where the corporate office is, and I passed her test. I passed it so well that she's like, ooh, I like Oakland. I have clients there. Or whatever she said. Miss Fancy Pants with her fancy purse. 
About a month ago, I got some numbers from Nikki D. Remember, I did a live show with him, and none of them picked up. And they're numbers from a place called Market Basket, which I guess is a grocery store. And、um, he snaps pictures of these post-its that are sitting on someone's desk. I assume his manager's, maybe. Remember, I talked to that one lady that wanted the bags, and I told her that they were for drug deals or something. They were for her church, actually. And that lady apparently works there now, and she keeps asking about the phone call to people. I think that's what. Nikki D said, but there was one person on here that did not answer, and I'm going to try and call her right now.、Um, her, her name is Joanne, and it says above her name, Cavita Apple Cider Vinegar Iced Tea with Lemon, and then there's her phone number. So let's try this one. Hello. Hello, Joanne. Yep. Hey, it's Roy from the Market Basket. You were in here、uh, yelling about some apple cider vinegar stuff. Oh, do、Iced、you、tea. have it? Oh, sight. Well, no, no. I was, I was calling to tell you to please don't do that. You're causing a ruckus, like causing a scene here at the store. Well, I wasn't and, and, yelling. And being rude. No, you, you like, you were like standing up on a, on a thing in the middle of the aisle. You're like screaming about apple cider vinegar, and, and this is saying this is BS that our store doesn't carry it. You like swiped your arm, <laughs> swiped your arm、uh, across the, across the shelf, and like threw a bunch of bottles off the shelf. That we had to pay for.、Oh, yeah, you know? That, I know. I'm sorry about that. I, I just, I, I like my apple cider vinegar. I just can't, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, maybe you can go to some other store and like it somewhere else because we don't need that kind of shit around here. Okay. We, we, have en- we have enough problems as it is, lady. Oh, all right. Okay. I will, I will go to Whole Foods and get my apple cider vinegar stuff there then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please do because we're tired of your bullshit, okay? Okay. All right. Well,、um, yeah, that sounds great then.、Uh, you're, you're officially banned from the store. Don't ever come back here again. We're putting your picture up next to the front door. Really? Who is it? I, I don't know. Can you tell that guy in the background to shut the fuck up? It's none of his business. Tell him to butt out of your phone calls. Take a stand. <laughs> Be like, I, I have no idea. What's he saying hey, now?、Uh, my phone number is. I don't know who would know. I actually got apple, I have apple cider vinegar on. I'm, I'm the assistant manager. Just tell that guy to shut the fuck up. T- tell him this yeah, doesn't, con- con- tell him it doesn't concern him. If you want to let us in on the gag.、Uh, yeah, I don't、so. get it. I mean, I'm just trying to get apple cider vinegar tonic. I mean, well, it's been on the list forever. You know, it's not a basket. You know. You know, yeah, just, just get the number. Well, if you guys are going to、yeah, just sit there and have a conversation、that? together, maybe I should hang up. Oh, you can hang up if you want.、Okay. I mean, I don't understand why you would even do this. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just letting you know. I'm the assistant manager here at Market Basket, and I would like you to not do that anymore. Come in here and break our shit, cause a scene. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can even hear me because that guy in the background won't shut the fuck up. Oh, he doesn't have a name. No, he doesn't have a name. Oh no, I've, I've told her my name several times. She just doesn't listen. She probably can't hear over no, your, your loud voice. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? This is Roy. What? I, I can't even. I, I, look, I can't even hear that guy in the background. If he wants to get on the phone,、wow. that's fine, but I can't hear、oh, what he's okay, saying. Okay, Roy, he's the assistant manager at Market Basket. So, okay. So, I, I will be man for. Banned from the market basket. That's fine. Yeah, we're Roy, put- what? Roy doesn't have a last name. It's just a manager of market basket. We're, we're you put- have an employee number or something, Roy? We're putting your picture up next to the door too, and we're gonna make sure it's、oh, a bad picture. Roy, get the picture up of the door. Yeah, I didn't hear、What's、any of that. I didn't hear any of that because he's not on the phone. He's like across the room or something. I'm sure he's saying yeah, really interesting things though.、Basket. Roy, I'm sorry, Roy. Can I cut your tongue now or what? Now I can't hear you. You need to be on the phone instead of across the room, stupid. Yeah,、oh, hey, I'm on the phone right now. Oh, there you so, go.、Um, there you go. You have to hold it. You have to hold it the right way. Don't hold the phone upside down. Yeah, here's the phone right now. So, what's your name, bro? What's your name, Roy?、Oh, I've told her several times. This is Roy Gerbell. I'm the assistant manager here at Market Basket. Roy Gerbell. Nope, I didn't say that. You just, you just need to listen. No, you need to say your last Take name. Take the damn chopsticks out of your ears. Before, hey, listen, right before your little fucking game gets gets fucking serious and you start having regrets. Oh, don't get mad. I want to be a little more. What's the matter? Yeah, no, What's really, the, are you mad? 
I know who you are is not going to be very difficult, bro. So it sounds like you're getting upset. You want to stop fucking playing games. Don't, hey, hey, don't curse, okay? I'm, I'm an assistant manager. I don't have to put up with cursing yeah, from I, people I, like you. Boss, I'm telling you right now, dude. I don't know if you're, you know, I know you're fiddle fucking us right now, but you kind of irritate me. Fiddle fucking? And you throw, you throw, oh, out, you throw out a regular mouth. You, so you, you just gave me a show that, title. Well, my girlfriend, and, and I'm not too cool with that, so. Yeah, well, your you girlfriend, she's there. kind of a bitch. She comes in here and causes a scene, yells about apple vinegar some shit like break stuff throws <laughs> yeah. it off the shelf so you yeah. need you, you, Roy, seriously i'm uh you really better hope that i don't find out who you are bro. So, sounds like uh, a bunch you, of you drama to, to me so she sounds like uh, a really dramatic person maybe, maybe you should find somebody uh, a little more low-key on your fucking face dude <laughs> when i get a hold of your little fucking bitch oh, i'll tell you that right that's now. So, so adorable you're not on the internet dude. You're, you're not on the fucking internet right now you're, you're, 339 <laughs> One Roy, are you fucking serious, dude? Are you serious? Yep, I'm... I will fucking kill you, man. Oh, that's game that's... the fuck on, Roy. Game the fuck on, dude. And, and don't fuck him, dude. I don't understand. Yeah, like, yeah, fuck me, no, Joanne. We're done. We're done. We're done. Don't call this number again if you know what's good for you. Oh, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna call her later around. when you're that's not around. Problem. I'm gonna sexy talk to her. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, you're not gonna be doing any of that shit, dude, because hey, you're gonna be talking out the side of your fucking hey, face. Hey, hey, shithead, okay? shithead. Joanne's my new yeah, girlfriend. Shit, Why don't you fuck off? Watch your fingers, bitch. I'll see ya. Watch my fingers. What? What was that? Did why, why did you tell me to watch my fingers? What does that mean? She got a chastity belt on or something? I'm so glad her boyfriend was there though, because she was just playing along. It was gonna be a boring prank, and then he got on and yelled at me a bunch. What an awesome boyfriend. Oh look, here's another email from Nikki D with more market basket numbers in it. We've got a post-it that's taped up to a wall or something. Or actually, there's two of them here. What a shitty post-it if you have to use scotch tape on it. This first one, it's a red post-it, which has a phone number on it, and it just says Alan's Window. That's all it says, so I don't know where to go with this one. I guess I'm just going to tell him I'm calling about the window. See where it goes. Hi, you have reached Alan's Cleaning Service. Oh. Please leave your name and number at okay. and someone will call you back. Well, let me try one more time. Maybe they'll pick up if I call again. I wonder if they're just offering to clean their windows or something. Hi, you have reached Alan's Cleaning Service. Please leave your name and well, number at the tone, and someone will call you back. Okay, well, the next one, uh, it's uh, another post-it. It's on the same thing that it's taped up onto. And this one just has a guy's name. It says Bob has a phone number, and then it says management company underneath. So maybe it's the property management company that the, that the place is located on? Perhaps? I don't really know. Maybe I should call and tell them we dug a tunnel. Bob Prince. Hi, Bob? Yes. Oh, hey, it's Roy from the Market Basket. Hey, Roy. How are you doing? I'm doing well. That's good to hear. Hey, um, we we found uh, we dug a hole uh, un- under you know down in the floor. We we're just trying to get some more space, and we came across uh, an intricate network of tunnels underneath the store. Do, do you know anything about that? Hey, Roy, what market basket are you calling from? Uh, you know the one, the one that you've been to, the one over on the street yeah. down well, down the road. I do a couple of them. So which which market? What town? Ah, what town? I, I mean, what kind of question is that? Well, well, Roy, I I take care of a couple of market baskets. Oh, don't have to yell at me, okay? I don't need to be yelled at. I'm, I'm just calling to let you know about a problem. There's just these tunnels underneath the store. And, I mean, as long as, I mean, if you don't know about them, maybe we should just keep it a secret. Because uh, I think we're going to use that as extra square footage here at the store. So, um, I don't know, maybe just disregard this call. Roy, are you pranking me? No, why? Why would you say that? Who is this? This is Roy. I'm the assistant manager here over at Market Basket. Yeah, which Market Basket? Oh, over on the other road. On the what road? We just just found these these tunnels. We were, um, we, part of the floor collapsed and we, what? Wait, what Market Basket? I already told you. Which one? I already told you. It's the, no, the you I'm the assistant manager here. We just found tunnels, but I think we're going to just keep them to ourselves. You know, just kind of put something over the floors. Nobody finds them, and just we'll just keep some of our inventory Roy, I, down I'm, there. I'm just having a little trouble hearing you. That's why I keep asking you, 
what town is the market basket in? Oh, it's the same town I'm calling from. Durr. Okay. Look, look, it's no big deal. I, I yeah. think, I think, um, like you don't know about the tunnels, right? Roy, can you just? I I don't know what town you're calling oh, from. Can it, you just tell me what town? Never mind. Just don't worry your pretty little head about it. Just I I think just disregard this call, okay? Not, there's no problem at all. Everything's fine. He hung up on me, and I have no idea where the market basket's located at. I, I mean, I just I know the state that it's in, but I don't know which one it is. And I think Nikki D has told me which one it is in the past, but I can't remember. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, it looks like this one, he's given me the store manager's name, the store director's name. I guess I could call the store manager and ask him which store he manages. But I don't think I care that much. Let's just move on to these customer numbers down here, because underneath those two numbers, there are four customer numbers. Or no, five customer numbers. Three of them just say customer, the other one just have names. So I don't know what to do with these. Like, why would they have a customer's phone number and not have their name? It just says customer. The number you have reached. All right. First one is disconnected. Second one has a name on it. Hello? Hello, Tom? Yeah. Hey, it's uh, Roy. I'm the assistant manager here at the Market Basket. Yeah. And uh, you were in here not too long ago. And um, our security uh, guy, he, he let me see the tape and... We we see that you were urinating on some of the products in here, and you know I, I don't want to make. No, a, I wasn't urinating. Oh no, we have we, we have it on on video, and I, I just you know it's not not a big deal. You don't have to deny it, but could you just not do that anymore? That that's gross. This is a grocery store. Come on. I wasn't. I I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, well, you were here right at the market basket. Uh, which which market basket are you talking about? Well, the the one you were at. Like, like, do you go to a lot of market baskets and urinate on the on the I bread? Do not. On, on, I don't urinate on bread. Uh, well, uh, it sure looks like you in the security tape. I don't know what you're talking about. It, it was the same day you were in here, and and we have it on. We have video. We put it on YouTube. Actually, I, we, like, there's a video of us uh, of you on YouTube peeing on bread, and we're all laughing at you I in the know. background. Yeah, I don't know what about. I'm sorry, what? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, the the time that you urinated on the bread in our store. I didn't urinate on no broken bread. Oh, well. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. Anyway, uh, YouTube, they wanted me to get your permission to, um, y- you know, like use your name and everything in this YouTube video. So so people, um, they, they, they want to, they need your permission uh, so that we can monetize the video and make make money from advertisements where, where you're peeing on the bread. I didn't pee on no fucking bread. Okay, look, you don't have to deny it, and you don't have to yell at me. I'm, I'm, I didn't pee in no fucking bread. I'm, I'm just saying... bullshit. But, okay, well, okay, fine. You didn't pee in the bread. But can I just get your permission um, to no, go ahead and monetize... No, my fucking permission. Yeah, but I just want to put ads on this YouTube video so we can make money on it, because it's gotten over 50,000 hits. No, no, I, I didn't pee in no fucking bread. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if you didn't pee in the bread, how... And I didn't go to no dead and fucking either. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. Okay, well, I don't deliver to that. Store. Hey, hey, if if you didn't pee in the bread, then how come I can't have permission? You shouldn't even care because it's it's not you, right? I don't know what you're fucking talking about. Well, I just want to this 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 call is pissing me right off. Well, I want to put ads on this YouTube video so I can make a little bit of extra I cash. I don't give a shit what you want to do with it. I didn't pee on no fucking bread. Okay, okay. Well, you know, like we can just call it even if you'll just give me permission and let me make some money off of this whole no, thing. No, because we had to pay for this bread that you peed on. I don't know who, who the fuck this is, but well, it was this you. Is, this is it was stupid. Definitely, you, I, maybe you were in a drunken what, stupor. What's my name? Uh, Tom. Tom. I didn't pee on bread. Tom. I don't, I don't Tom. Know what you're talking about. Tom. The bread peer. But I'm just gonna hang up on you. Okay, well, look, there's <laughs> no reason for you to get mad at me. You know, you're the one that peed on the I bread. I want to know who, what fucking story are you talking about. The the market basket, the one you were at. Yeah, I deliver to uh, nine different ones every fucking night. Hey, hey, you don't you don't have to curse at me. We'll, we'll ban you from the store forever. We, we I pro- don't know which store you're talking about. We probably don't want you here anyway. What kind of stuff do you deliver? I deliver bread. Oh, oh, what a coincidence. 
I didn't pee on no bread. Imagine I don't know that. What you're talking about? You know, you think you could just pee on it while it's in your truck, and that way we wouldn't catch you on the security cameras. Like, can't can't you, can't you just do that? Because you know, frankly, I don't care if the customers get pee in their bread. But I didn't know, pee on no bread. But if we see it, we we have to say something about it. So that's I'm just letting you know. Please don't pee on our bread. I didn't pee on no bread. It's gross. I didn't pee any bread on on any bread. I know. I I, I'm just kidding with you. I'm just kidding. I'm just. Who the hell is it? Uh, this is Roy. I'm the assistant manager here at the store. Now I was just looking. Which, which one? I, I was just looking through the the Rolodex on uh, oh, here in the manager's office, and I saw your name, and I thought it'd be funny to make a prank call. That's all. It's it's. You're just kidding no, around. It's, it's not funny. Well, no, no. Well, th- why are you laughing for then? No, it's, I don't want like to be accused of peeing on the bread because that's a bunch of crap. I know that. <laughs> Actually, it's a bunch of pee. <laughs> Which store are you talking about? Uh, Which the, store are you from? Oh, I, I don't want to tell you because I don't. I don't want to get in trouble. But you know. It, 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 um, it, it's it's not a big deal. We were just playing around. I've called a bunch of people from the from the Rolodex today, and you know, just just a joke. You, you didn't really pee on the bread. It's okay. We're not gonna. I don't. Know. I don't like these call, phone calls like that. Okay. Well, I that's, won't do uh, it again. That, that's it's, part of my, part of my fucking job. It's just. I do this every fucking night. I know. Night. I know. It's just the, you know the manager's not here today. He he called in sick, so we're just kind of goofing off today and being crazy. Like, like, uh, we're, we're trying to be like, uh, the, the employees in that TV show, Superstore. We're, we're trying to be silly like they are, like on TV, because it's funny. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't think it's funny. We, we figure <laughs> prank calls is something they're probably going to do at some point on that show. You ever watch that? Yeah, I know, but yeah, you're, you're screwing around with my, my job. Well, well, no, not really, because cause this has nothing to do with your job. It's just a prank call. So, you know, it's it's not a big deal. How how how, how do you get my number? Uh, it's in the Rolodex here on the manager's desk. You know, one of those spinny things with the the cards in them. No, I just like to know. I I, I know this is from dead. No, no, that's just the There's caller ID call. I spoofed. It's just some random phone number. We we have caller ID spoofing at the store. So anyways, um, April Fools! I deliver, nine, yeah. I, I deliver nine, nine stores a night, and I don't pee in no bread. Oh, I know, I know. You would never do that. No, yeah, I was just playing around. I was just kidding. Just a joke. Yeah. Just It's a crazy, funny, funny, crazy day with, with the manager not being here. So we're just, we're calling this big list yeah. of customers. I, I mean, a big list of vendors and customers and everything else. Yeah. Well, you probably get in for that. Okay, <laughs> we won't do it again. I promise. Well, I'm going to move on to the next person on the list. I'm going to call the beer guy and, and tell him we caught him peeing in the beers. It's going to be hilarious. Right. Hey, you want me to call yeah. him while you're on three way and you can listen in? No, no, I don't want to hear. Oh, come on, you you could pretend to be the manager and and tell him you're tired of him peeing in the beers. It'll be so funny. No, 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 well done. <sighs> All right, don't call me back. Uh, I won't. I mean, unless I have a question about the bread, like a legit question. Okay, he's gone. Well, apparently some of these are vendors of the store. That would have been good information to have, Nikki D. Next on the list is a customer. The note says nothing but customer and has their phone number. Did I mention before that this is just a notepad list on Nikki D's cell phone? I don't know why he would have a list that just says customer on it. Like, where do you get these numbers? Can't you tell me something about them? What the hell, Nikki D? It's always something with you. What the hell, Nikki D? It's always something with you. Hello? Hi, this is Roy from the Market Basket. Yes? You know, you, know, you were in here a while back. What Market Basket? Which uh, one? Uh, the, the local one here. Anyway, what you doing? What, what you doing? Nothing. Oh, what you thinking about? Can I help you with anything? Oh, no, 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 no problem at all. I was just 
looking through our files here and I, I saw your file and I don't know, I just thought I'd call and say hello. Y- you'll have to excuse me, I've been smoking a lot of weed today while I'm working, or supposed to be working. But, you know, just just digging through the old you? digging through the old file cabinet. What was that? Uh, I said, "Good for you." Oh. Um, I work at Market Basket. Yeah, yeah. I was looking through your file. One thing led to another. Next thing you know, I'm calling you up and just seeing how you're doing. Oh, okay. Oh, and as long as I've got you on the phone, do you think you can cover my shifts for the for the rest of this week? Like I come in tomorrow. From four to about nine. I don't know if that conflicts with you. Uh, no, then, I already have my own shifts to cover. Then, Sorry then, about that. Well, yeah, but then you'll get more shifts this way. It'll be more money. He's gone, and and Nikki D. He wrote customer next to this number. It says customer, but apparently he's not a customer. He works there. I think Nikki D. Just does this shit to piss me off. Hey, look at this. I know which market basket it is now, because I just typed that guy's phone number in that I just talked to, and it tells me which market basket he works at. So now that I'm almost done with this list, I actually know which market basket I'm calling from. The next one on the list um, has a weird last name and just a first initial, and I think the last name is misspelled. Nikki D can't do anything right, you guys. This guy's not even going to pick up, probably. Nope, of course not. Let's try once, once more. See if he picks up. Hello? Hi there, Mrs. D. Yeah? Hey, this is Roy from the Market Basket. Oh, hi. Hi, what you doing? Uh, watching TV? What are you doing? (laughs) Oh, you know, I'm just going through my file cabinet here. And I saw your file here in my file cabinet, and I don't know. Just thought I'd call up and say hello. Hi. Hi. What What are you watching? Um, I'm sorry. What was your name again? My name's Roy. I'm the assistant manager here at the Market Basket. Okay. Yep. Is there, like, a specific reason why you're calling? Uh, no, you know, like, I'm just kind of, here's the thing. I smoked a bunch of weed earlier, and I'm just kind of stuck in my office because I'm afraid to go out there and deal with people. So, you know, one thing leads to another. I'm going through my file cabinet, and I'm just digging through random files. And I saw your file here, and I just thought I'd call and say hello. Oh. Well, hi. Hi. Um, Did you really get in trouble for shoplifting? It says that in here. I'm sorry, what? I, I said, did you... I've never been in trouble for shoplifting. I've never gotten in trouble while I've been working for Market Basket. Oh, yeah. It just it, it, some, it must have Someone must have wrote that in here by mistake. It's on your permanent record. It says, busted for shoplifting, but we came to an agreement and didn't have to arrest her. I'm sorry, what? I, I'm just reading yeah, the file I'm here. I'm going to let you go. Bye. <laughs> why? Why? All right, that one was not Nikki D's fault because uh, that one did not say customer. It just had a person's name and nothing else. So I'm not going to blame him for this one. But the last one on the list, it does say customer. So let's call it up and see what happens. Hello, you have ah. reached the regional school district office. If oh, you would geez. like to reach either the middle school. Okay, it's a it's a school. I'm not going to call that one. So that's the end of that list from that image, but also in the body of the email, he has two more numbers. One's for Caitlin and one's for Nancy. Oh, and I think they're both related somehow. Like, one one is the emergency contact. Holy shit, Nikki D, why can't you just tell me what what these are? Like, what am I supposed to do with these? I'm just going to assume that this one is an employee and tell her, I don't know, we need her to come in all night. We're going to pull an all-nighter tonight. Got a lot of shit to stock. Or no, that's stupid. I, I don't know what to say, you guys. Maybe I should plan this out before I dial the number. I'm definitely not going to ask her what she's doing, though. At the tone, please ah. record your message. She's not there anyway, so I can't ask her how she's doing. So I'm going to call her emergency contact number, who has the same last name as her, and ask them how she's doing. Oh, look, she's got a Facebook. You reached the voicemail for Nancy. I'll be a... I guess she's not going to answer, though. You reached the voicemail for Nancy. <sighs> so, um, 
neither of them will pick up, so I guess I'm done with these. I'm going to go ahead and delete them. Thanks for the numbers, Nikki D. Those were some good ones. Even though you didn't label them for me, you fucking jerk. Hey, Brad. Um, hey. This is Adam. I was listening to public radio. Oh, and shit. And they have uh, That's crazy. a thing where they beg the public for money. Of course and they do. And it kind of reminded me of you. <laughs> and I was thinking Thanks. kind of something that you could do. Uh, like you play prank calls all day. People call in and pledge a certain amount of money yeah. and they make a prank call with you prank or call telethon. for a supervisor, you know, they quote unquote are your supervisor. Um, and they're there on standby. Uh, take a listen. Take a listen. What? What? What's happening? It's just blank. I swear nothing's happening right now. I think he's playing something on his computer. I'm skipping ahead right now. Because it looks like there is more audio at the end in the translation, transcription thingy. Where is it? What's happening? (laughs) And you do something like that. Have a great day. Bye. Okay. Something like like just sit there in silence for over a minute. That's what I'll do. Yeah, sorry. I don't know what you were trying to show me, but I swear it was completely silent on that part. Hey, pervert. Um, I'm uh, calling right when you posted the voicemail show. So I'm hoping I'm the first fucking voicemail guy. Nope, yeah, you yeah. weren't. Yeah. There were there were like three before you, and I've only played one because the other ones were, you know, just people screaming things into the phone. I want to play you a song. Nope. Nope. Stop it. What the hell? All right. All right. Thanks for the song, Jag TV. Thanks for calling in and everything. Brad, it's DJ Tube Socks. Um, I just wanted to let you know, like, you awesome have too name. many fucking shows now. Like, I don't know why you have a new show, like, every six hours. But some of us have work to do. Um, so you're making it very difficult for me. So Sorry. if you could please reduce your amount of shows. Well, you quit your job. Um, that would be great. Okay, bye, Brad. I love you, Brad. Um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> bye, DJ Tube Socks. I don't know where you're getting a show every six hours. I wish I could do one every six hours. Someday I'll get up to that point. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, this message is for uh, Mr. Roy Gerbil. That's me. This is uh, Roy as well. T. Mercer, actually. Oh, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm calling because uh, you actually called this gas station that I manage, and you told one of my co-workers to kick the other one in the shit. Did told him do it? it was a robot, and I just want to say that I knew it. I told everybody it was a robot and nobody believed me. I'm glad. And they just thought me crazy, I, but I now I know help. I'm not crazy. Thank you. You know, like, since he's a robot, you could just take a gun and shoot him right in the chest and it wouldn't be murder. He's a robot. It's okay. Try it. You'll see. You'll see that I'm right. If you want to prove it to everyone else, that's the only way to prove it. Shoot him in the chest. Hey, Brad. Do you please play my voicemail? Nope. On your show? Not, not going to happen. Nope. I'm deleting this one. Hiya Brad dude, I love your fucking show man, I especially love that fucking tune at the beginning of that PLA radio show, coming right from fucking Mexico. thanks for the voicemail. Oh yeah, fucking cool man, (laughs) fucking love that shit. Uh, Keep it up Brad. Good old Shifty Pop. I fucking love it man, love it man. Oh wait, no that's, that's not Shifty Pop, I can't remember who that is, I suck. Thanks for whoever made that song, though, that that guy just covered. It's the PLA radio show coming right down. He, he called back in, you guys. I don't go. know what to do. So don't touch that dial and don't touch that phone. Hell yeah, man. All right. Hey, Brad. It's been a while since I've given you a call. I'm sure you missed me dearly. Yep. But anyway, I was lurking through the PLA store to find some a cool shirt to buy. And I was kind of wanting one with just the red and blue bell on it with a yellow lightning bolt. But that wasn't there. I saw one with the word cactus going through it, but that one, that was for hobo. Yeah, if you could get just that. the bell on there, I would throw the money at you. Okay. Anyway, cactus, cactus. I'll do that. You know, there's two shirt stores. There's phonelosers.spreadshirt.com. And then there's the new one, which I completely forget where that's at. Or what site that was on. I don't I don't know. But, you know, everything's on phonelosers.spreadshirt.com. Everything that I have so far. But there is not a shirt like that. You're right. I need to make one like that with just the logo on it and nothing else. I'll try to do that soon. If I can find a good high-resolution copy of the PLA logo. I, I don't think I own a copy of that anymore. 
thanks to the federal government. Brad, I can't stop saying butt slam now because of you, and everyone thinks I'm weird. Okay, bye. Well, <laughs> that's pretty weird. Like, how does that even come up in conversation? Hey, Brad, it's Olga. Hey, real I'm Olga. I'm leaving a message after, like, so many months. Yay. But hey, I have a joke for you. Holy shit. Um, what is a phone's favorite part of a hotel? I give up. What is a phone's favorite part of a hotel? The reception desk. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yep, that was a good one. Okay, it's 3 a.m. I'm going to bed. All right. Bye. Go to bed, Olga. You guys, that joke wasn't very funny. I think she's losing it. She, she just doesn't have it anymore, you know? Hey, Brad, it's Crimson. Hey, Crimson. So, I was watching a clip of... This uh, is a minute and a half long voicemail, so this better be really good or I'm cutting you off at 30 seconds. A uh, documentary about this cult leader, you know, it's like a personality cult, and I was thinking, oh, wow, what a weird, uh, you know, like, how would it feel to be like one of his followers? It's so crazy. And then I was thinking, hmm, oh, that's right, I'm part of a personality cult. Yep. From Brad Carter. That's oh, right. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Had you hey, all Brad, fooled. We always, you're always talking about the phone losers. Well, we're always talking about phone losers, but really when it comes down to it, it's really just about you. I mean, all these other people you reference. Oh, come on. Uh, you know, that used to be part of the phone losers. All, we're well, all the phone they're losers. They're not part of the phone losers anymore. I mean, when's the last time that even a called the voicemail? I'd say that prank call. Yeah, done yeah. Anything even related to the phone losers. And then fucking else, fucking freeloaders. Like Who do you think they are? And stuff like that that you're always trying to get us to listen to. You know, we always try to give them a shot. And then it's like, yeah, we don't like them that much. Oh, come on. We basically are a cult leader. Give that, XYZ a chance. Except the fact you know, where it's a personality cult and you're a cult leader. All, All right. right. Thank you, Brad, for being our cult leader. You're welcome. Bye. I can't believe I played this entire voicemail. It says right in the outgoing message, Crimson, only 30-second voicemails. Why do you think you deserve an extra minute? You think you're special? Hey, Brad. It's hey. Cody New Name calling. I just want to say these calls... Cody New Name, he's left a 22-second-long voicemail because he knows how to follow the rules. are great in this uh, show, but um, especially that last one right before the break... It was hilarious. Had me rolling. The break? But uh, what? hurry up and stop playing voicemails and get back to the show. All yeah. right? Okay. Thank you. You're Next welcome. Practice. Okay, last voicemail. This is Mike Effin Brown. Effin Reality. Yeah. Yay. Anyway, Mike. just wanted to give you a call. I know how you prefer your voice messages to be short. Oh, no. That was too short. Come on, Mike. What the hell? But yeah, that is all of the voicemails. I'm completely done with the voicemails. The voicemail box is 100% empty right now. Isn't that crazy? That last show I did really worked out. Anyway, I think it's time to get going, but first, let's play a prank call from someone else. Instead of my boring shit, let's look through my emails. I have a bunch of emails here from people who want me to play their prank calls on my show, which I've been ignoring for a while, but I'm finally going to play a few of these. Or, I mean, I'm going to play one of them right now. Here's one. This one is from Josh. It was sent back in November of last year. Oh, wait a minute. He sent it on the day that I got raided, and it actually came in during the time I was in the process of being raided. So that seems very suspicious to me. I think Josh is a part of this whole thing. He's trying to distract me or something. The FBI hired him to distract me with this prank call. That's what it is. But I guess I'm going to play this anyway. Josh says, This woman sounds and acts exactly like Jelanta and flips out about a minute in. Without your show, I never would have thought to do a prank like this. You should play this on your show so the world can see the wonderful things you've inspired. And he says, if the context matters, this woman lost $100 in a jammed slot machine. Josh lives in Vegas. She spent 10 minutes flipping out and harassing customers before finally leaving her number so they could refund her once the technician arrived to open the machine. I took down her number and called the next day pretending to be the corporate office leading to this gym. And I haven't listened to this one yet. I just kind of skimmed through it real quick, and I heard a bunch of yelling. So let's see how this goes. I'm sorry, is this a Destiny? Yes, this is Destiny. I'm so sorry, it sounds like I woke you there. I was just calling to confirm that you've uh, been contacted and that the situation has been resolved with 7-Eleven. Okay, so you guys have the money. Um, um, yes, yes, but there's just been, a, uh, I think, a bit of a misunderstanding. I'm just trying to understand the situation myself here. 
so help me. So I understand you put some money in the machine. The machine jammed, and the cash and the clerk was not able to refund your money to you at that time. Is that so? I'm assuming this is a slot machine that's inside of a Seven Eleven store. And if you've never been to Las Vegas, they have slot machines everywhere. Every place you go, there's a slot machine at the Seven Elevens, probably at the McDonald's, probably in the Playland at the McDonald's. So he he didn't mention that, but apparently he's pretending to be with Seven Eleven, who has slot machines. Correct. Stupid Josh. Yes. Okay, and uh, can you just confirm for me how yes. much? Uh, okay, well, we did have our uh, technician found. One hundred dollars. It was one hundred dollars. All right, I uh, just need to confirm. Are you are you certain it was one hundred one hundred dollars? Yes. Uh, well, the, well, the problem with that is I had my uh, technician come out earlier this morning, and I uh, understand I was not at the property myself, but my technician and my cashier have both told me that they um, they found a ten dollar bill that was jammed in that machine, and they believe that's what you know was causing okay. the problem. No, um, no, no, no. I don't know about the ten dollar bill. I put a hundred dollar bill in that machine. You guys told me you was gonna give me my money back. Yes. I don't know nothing about no ten dollar bill. Or why it was jammed or nothing. Okay. I put a hundred dollars in the machine. It's not in my sure. I'm a hundred percent sure. And I need I'm asking for my hundred dollars back. Okay. I, I, I don't understand how come I had to wait this long. I don't want to go through no all well, of this extra stuff. Well ma'am, we found we found a ten dollar bill in the machine. It was not a hundred dollar bill. We found a ten dollar bill that jammed the machine. Are you sure you're not mistaken? That is not true. And it, that's not true. And if you if y'all want to do the whole rundown, y'all finna have to run cameras back because I we, need my hundred dollars from you guys today. Well, well, we did. And so my, somebody finna, I'm finna come up there right now, and somebody finna have to run the camera uh-oh. back. That's what's finna have to happen. Well, we, we I don't want to hear nothing about no ten dollars. All right, I, I I did look on the cameras. My manager looked if on the cameras. If you run the camera back, you see yes. the money in my hand when I walk in the store, and yes. it's not a ten dollar bill. And you see me put it in the, you see me put the money in yes. the machine. Yes, we clearly see. on the camera. Well, if nobody else in the store. It's empty as I know what. I don't okay, have to okay. purse calm, my calm hand. Down, calm I don't down, have anything calm down, else, man. so you can see the money. No, because you're waking me up out my sleep to tell me some nonsense. All Probably I want to know is day. do you guys have my hundred? I should not be answering right. no questions. All, right, All this extra stuff I'm going through should not be happening. Okay. I feel like I'm talking to the police officer or something <laughs> when I only should be getting called up out of my sleep after I'm getting home from work that you guys have my hundred dollars. I shouldn't be going through all of these questions and all of this stuff about no ten dollars being in my machine because it's all nonsense and I don't want to hear it. And I don't want to hear it. And there's no reason why uh, machine ma'am, don't ma'am, tell ma'am, me ma'am. that it's a hundred dollar hand pay. No, 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 Uh-oh. sir, Uh-oh. sir. You We've got me. another lady going on and on about her her expensive handbag. You want me about my sleep? Yeah. I bet questions. you it was a Henry Bindell. Handbag. To you. There's no way that a machine is gonna say can pay a hundred dollars. I'm not stupid. I was not fucking born yesterday, well, and ain't nobody about to play me out my money. I don't give a fuck how black I am. Ain't nobody gonna play me out my money. That's nothing to do with your race, ma'am. I assure you. Said, uh, okay, yeah. No, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's what I'm telling you. Right. I'm black, and ain't nobody about to play me. I don't give a fuck. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am, so ma'am, listen. with the machine saying, my- hold on. With the machine, so hold on. You hold on. You want me on my feet and call me. With the machine saying a hundred dollar hand pay is required, you cannot sit up here and tell me it was a ten dollar stuck up in the machine. Okay. No matter what was stuck up in that machine, it does not matter. I put a hundred. You should tell her that you saw that she wrote on the ten dollar bill. You put like an extra zero on it to try and trick us and make it look like a hundred. In that machine, and I'm asking you for my hundred dollars back. That'd you wake me up on my sleep to ask me all these questions. I'm not going to answer no more questions. I'm, I'm just trying. Dollars. I'm just trying to find out what happened. You have my money, okay. and that's it. I'm no, just trying to resolve it. Find out because you guys have killers. Ma'am? You don't have to find out what happened because you have killers. Man, we There's we no did reason. look on the cameras. We, we both looked on the cameras. Yes. Okay, we both looked on the cameras. Actually, we did not capture. Uh, uh, the, 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 I admit the resolution is not that great. All of that. There's no way that you cannot capture it. Our, our, our machine, our machine did not. Blame me like I'm stupid. Our machine did not register uh, any bills put in. That's okay, the problem. Okay, and your machine should have never said a hundred dollars had pay. It's all fucking. You, you should have told her that her ten dollar bill broke your machine, and she has to pay for the machine. Ten dollars right. in the machine. All right, well, I don't want to hear this stupid her. shit like I'm retarded. Uh, uh, I don't want to hear this stupid shit like all right, I'm retarded. All right, ma'am. So according to our clerk, according to my clerk and to our technician. They both told me that you. They pulled a ten dollar bill. Clerk and your technician and yeah. all of this stuff. Your clerk and your technician should have called me and said that shit. Now I knew I was going to have to go through a whole bunch of bullshit, and right. now I'm going to be up there starting no, problems. No, ma'am. I don't give a fuck, nigga. Like the fuck, oh, I said, I'm black and ain't nobody want. Hey, so nobody about to blame me. Nobody. I don't give a fuck. What I gotta do? I'm gonna run for mine. You bullshit me. Don't call my phone with all that extra bullshit. You didn't take shit from anyone, you guys. And if you're fucking cut up out ten dollars or some shit, one of them used to call me and say that shit. Who am I gonna speak it to? Who the fuck are you? Why do you? What, what the fuck is wrong with you? I got like you retarded. Call my phone at five o'clock in the evening when my shit got stuck in that way. 
this is this is the way to get what you want for sure. Okay. Take notes, everyone. This works. Sell your handbag. You need the ten dollars. Okay, man. Um, what we're going to do is we are going... Aw, it ended there. What the hell, Josh? I wanted to hear the resolution. I wanted to hear what you're going to do for her to help her out. I feel so cheated. But that was a good one. That was fun just to hear her freak out on you. So good job, Josh. I'm glad that I'm inspiring you to be an asshole. And I, I hope that you uh, immediately drove back to the 7-Eleven and hung out and waited for her to show up again and start screaming. Because that's probably what she did after this phone call. If anyone out there would like to send me your own prank for me to play on this show, you can send it to rbcp at phonelosers.org, but try to make sure that it's five minutes or less. Josh's was right around five minutes. That was perfect, because, you know, I can't sit here and listen to 15-minute long prank calls. It's got to be a short one. So send me a prank if you've done a prank that you think would be good on this show. There's no guarantee that I'll play it on the show, but you never know. I might, eventually... But it'll probably take me months to play it like it did with Josh's call. That's the end of today's Snowplow show. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, at least more than the last one where I just played a bunch of voicemails and nothing else. But holy shit, that was worth it. It's so nice to have the voicemail box completely cleaned out and not have a bunch of voicemails that are like four or five months old in there. I've got to do that more often. A big thanks to Jack Off Daniels, who sponsored today's show. And also a big thanks to Matthew and D. High S who are new supporters of the show on the Patreon at patreon.com slash phone losers. And if you want to be a supporter of the show, you can go there or you can go to phonelosers.org slash cactus. Did I pronounce that name right? D high S? Does that mean he's the highest? Is that what he's trying to say? This is some weird stoner humor that I don't understand. I don't know. But thank you, Matthew and D high S and especially Jack off Daniels for sponsoring today's show. Be sure to add phone losers on Twitter at twitter.com slash phone losers. That's where you can usually get notified about live shows that are about to happen. I always post them on Twitter, or I usually post them on Twitter. I don't think I did last time. And also add Phone Losers on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone losers. And join the Phone Losers Facebook group and the subreddit and, I don't know, everything else. There's a bunch of links in the show notes. I'm sure there's links to all of this stuff. Every time you listen to a show, you should just go to the show notes and just click on everything and, and sign up. So you can always know what's going on with the PLA. I'm going to end today's show with a song by Bone Cage. You remember a few shows ago, I played a song by Bone Cage, and it was something about someone in a basement, like a stalker or something. It was called Box in the Basement. Well, today I'm playing the Bone Cage song called Stranger in the Basement. Bone Cage seems to have a thing about basements, and I'm not sure why, but this one is called Stranger in the Basement. Fucking weirdo. So you think that I'm scary With my cute little eyes and my mama's a prize So I bet you are wary I don't urinate on bread.